This is a typical installation of a base pump model RB750. The best installation is independent of the primary sump pump, where it simply pours onto the ground or into an underground drain pipe. In some cases, however, it may be necessary to connect into the primary sump pump discharge, either inside or outside. The installer takes out all the parts and starts by opening, reading, and then following the instructions. This is very important, especially when installing a base pump for the first time. After mounting the ejector itself to the side of a floor joist above the sump, we'll see that in a few minutes, the plumber heads outside to install the exterior discharge pipe. He had decided that the discharge would need to be connected to the underground drain pipe by sharing the last section of the existing primary sump pump discharge. In some cases, like this one, the steps outlined in the instructions may sometimes need to be done out of order to adapt to a given application. This plumber has done many installations and determined in this case that the exterior connection should be done first. He proceeds to cut out a short section of the existing sump pump discharge pipe and cements in a PVC Y fitting to receive the new base pump discharge pipe. A hole is then drilled into the house above the Y and next to the existing sump pump discharge pipe, which is approximately in line with the pump he mounted inside. Then he feeds the discharge hose into the house through the hole to where it will later be connected to the base pump. The discharge relief tee is cemented to the end of the hose and a short section of pipe is cemented into the lower opening of the tee and inserted into the Y. The plug on the T is shown here at the top and may also be mounted at an angle if needed. An air gap in this line will prevent siphoning back into the sump but is unseen because it is hidden by the mulch covering the ground. The plumber returned later, off camera, to caulk the seam around each pipe. Back inside we see the base pump where it is mounted on the side of the joist above the sump using the included grate clamp. We also see the white discharge hose that was pushed in from the outside. The plumber has added a quick connect type fitting to the water supply end of the pump and a PVC female adapter to the discharge end. He then installs the water supply piping from a nearby water line to the pump. He tees in and connects to the pump using copper pipe and installs a shutoff valve close to the pump for easy access. Other approved pipe materials may also be used, such as PEX or CPVC. The discharge hose is then connected to the pump. First it is cut to fit. And then cemented into the PVC female adapter. The suction screen with its female adapter is cemented to one end of a length of PVC pipe. In this case it will be installed in two sections. The pipe is measured and cut to fit according to the distance from the check valve on the base pump to where it will reach into the bottom of the sump. It is placed standing in the sump approximately in its final position and the final connections are made to the pump. This pipe may be one straight run or offset as shown here. 
The installer now inserts one end of the transfer tube into the small T-fitting at the top of the ejector valve and hangs the remainder down towards the floor. Before connecting the other end of the tube to the float, he will cut the included 6-inch piece of clear tube into 5 pieces and string them onto the transfer tube. As he places cable ties around the transfer tube to hold it neatly in place against the pipe, he slides a clear tube up behind each cable tie to prevent pinching the transfer tube as he tightens the cable tie. The excess cable tie may be cut off to make the job look neat and clean when finished. The float is mounted on the suction pipe near its final position using the pipe clamp and the kit. The tubing is now pushed into the top fitting on the float and excess tubing may be left on in case of later adjustments. In this case, the installer needed to reposition the float lower and the extra tubing allowed this. The back of the water alarm is opened, the sensor wire is uncoiled, and the battery is connected and placed inside. The cover is then replaced and the alarm box is mounted to the pipe above the sump using the Velcro square. The sensor at the end of the wire is strapped to the pipe down near the float by wrapping the reusable cable tie with the clear tube around the sensor wire where it meets the sensor. The tube protects the sensor wire from being damaged by the cable tie as it is pulled just tight enough to prevent it from sliding down the pipe. After testing the pump by lifting the float, it may be necessary to make final adjustments to the length of time the pump runs after the float ball drops to its lowest position. It is preset at the factory to run for about 35 seconds, but that can vary depending on conditions at the installation site. In this case, it ran too long and had to be adjusted to shut off sooner. The instructions show you how to do this. Now that it is all set, the float is lifted again and the run time is perfect. It runs for about 32 seconds and empties the sump very nicely. The sump cover is replaced and all the cords, pipes, and wires are straightened out and the job is left nice and neat. Here it is from top to bottom.